no matter how corporate, no matter how chic, no matter how anything I get, I'm really a T-Rex, guys. I'm a T-Rex. This is my T-Rex sweater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thrifted it. I think it was originally like an Ann Taylor or something or other, but I'm a T-Rex. I know, it's awesome. Welcome. Today we are going to be just, we're in the middle of Aries season and we're going to be discussing the full moon that we have coming up in Libra at 16 degrees. Please grab your journals for this one um, and we'll, we'll kind of just chat a little bit about the vibe and then I will get into our individual readings for the rising signs, but you can also watch for your sun and moon signs. So I constantly keep picking up the tarot cards and I don't, I just want to see, you know, what does this community need to see going into this Libra full moon? Okay, I've never seen the movie Frozen. But the song, let it go, let it go, is just like popping up in my head. Let it go. What are all of these? Let it go, let it go. Never even seen the movie, but I feel like, let it go. Let everything about the past structures everything fall to the ground. Let every bit of the set, the stage that was the old planet Earth, let it fall to the ground. Let all the things you thought that you knew and show up every day as this motherfucker. We're all on this journey. The world needs you to be you, not what you think the world needs you to be. You know better. You motherfuckers, you know better. I'm just going to preface this video that it is Aries season. I am an Aries sun. It's conjunct Jupiter in my natal chart in my fifth house of childlike spirits, creativity, and childlike expression. So although sometimes I could come across as a boisterous 22-year-old, I know a thing or two about a thing or two, but I swear like a motherfucker sometimes. So buckle up. Buckle up. We have so much activity going on in the Aries sector of life for bodies in Aries. Sarah, what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? Is that, you know, in a, in a birth chart, you know, when, when I was born, the sun was in Aries. So I identify as the energy of Aries. That is my ego. That is my assertion. That's my identity. That's how I go out into the world. We go first and do things first and lead and ask questions and permission never. Um, we start 35,000 projects and we finish two, maybe by default, by default. Yeah, it's fun for everybody involved. It's a good show. It's a good show. So that is me normally. When the sun is in the sky in Aries and planets are in the sky in Aries, everybody will get the little bit of a vibe of that. Everybody, regardless of when you were born, every person on the planet will get a little bit of the energy of that. But the people that have Aries, sun, moon, or rising in their chart that have a lot of activity in Aries in their chart are gonna be super amplifi amplified. We're gonna be like the superheroes of the world and like the main characters of the world. So I talk a lot about fame and I talk a lot about like acting as if people are watching you. It's because these energies are basically shining a spotlight like the sun in the sky, I always say it's like a lighthouse. You know, Mercury is your informa the information you receive. Venus is how you receive love. Mars is how you assert yourself. But when all of those spotlights are on you and they're activating you, specifically, you know, the Aries, right now the Aries and Taurus, you're going to feel like a superstar and you're going to feel like you're getting extra blessings. You're going to feel like you're getting extra attention or you're going to feel like you're getting extra lessons. That is happening. And it's 
written in the stars. So it's God doing this for you, let's say, for you. But you know, if you're not an Aries, you don't have a lot of Aries in your chart, you don't have a lot of Taurus in your chart, you still have a place in your chart that is that, is that sign. You still have a house that is occupied by Aries. So when we do your birth chart reading, we find out what area of your life is being activated. So even if you don't have a lot of planets and you don't feel like the main character, you know, you don't feel like you're the star on stage, where is the God of your understanding asking for you to focus? You know, we must accept the current and surrender to the current and accept the season that our life is in. So for example, maybe you have a lot of Sag in your chart. A lot of Sag in your chart and you must, and as a Sag, you must feel like, what the fuck? I am no way a supporting character. Mm -mm, no ma'am, no thank you. I am a main character, pardon me. And I'm getting a little, a little jealous. We'll use that, we'll use that word. So we recognize that and then we say, oh my goodness, but Sag is a trine, you know, really nice flowing energy to Aries. So how can I harness what's happening right now in the house that it's activating for me? So say maybe God was putting all of these beautiful planets in your house of, you know, adventure, quest, and long distance travel. So while you're sitting there scrolling on fucking Instagram, looking at, oh my goodness, this person's getting this, this person's getting this, this person's getting married, this person's getting a promotion, this person's getting this, where that trip that you've been dying to go on, the tickets are like freaking half price. And you're missing out because you're not looking. And your boss is an Aries and is getting all these things and would be in such great spirits to give you a paid vacation. Paid vacation. So... I loved the quote, and I will take this with take this quote with me forever. Millionaires don't follow astrology, but billionaires do. So check yourself, check yourself. Because if you're here with me, you are a forward thinker, you are a leader, you are doing something, and you are answering a call that is outside of who you believe to be. And a lot of this doesn't make sense. But if you get it, you know that our blessings are coming. They're looking for us. They are right around the corner. We've done our work. It's time for us to receive support. It's time, it's time. So check your chart. And if you don't have your birth chart, I mean, that's okie dokie. We can go off of your sun, your moon. And if you don't know your actual chart, you can go off of the Aries one and kind of see and learn a little bit, learn a little bit about that. Um, but definitely watch for, for your sun sign and, and you can get a lot of the vibrations from that. A lot of the vibrations from that but if we don't have a full birth chart we can go off of the general wheel but there are many places that you can go to online uh, you can go to like astrocharts.com astro-charts.com like cafeastrology.com numerous or just put into DuckDuckGo like free birth chart and it'll guide you through exactly how to get a circle grid that looks very similar to this or another option, what you could do is read the birth chart for the country that you're in. You know, I have done the birth chart for the United States right now, and that one is holy frickin' crap getting activated in every possible way. So if you live in the U.S., I know for Australia there's there's two, I believe. So let me know if you have questions, hon, and I can and I can walk you through it. But if you have your actual birth time, you're okie dokie. You're okie dokie. So... The full moon, if you want to grab your journal just for these just for these dates, the full moon is going to be happening on the 6th of April for the Gold Coast in Australia. It'll be happening at 1434. And in Gloucester, Massachusetts, it's the 6th of April. It's the very first thing in the morning at like 134 a.m. Like like literally very, very first thing. And so what do we know about full moons? So let's put all the lenses over this. We know that full moons are perfect times to purge old belief systems, purge, actually I need my journal, um, purge old belief systems, purge, you know, anything that really isn't serving us is the time to let go and release and, you know, it's volatile energy. So, you know, like we all know that like the werewolves come out and the, the cuckoos come out at, you know, the full moon. So be the cuckoo. 
be the cuckoo. Acknowledge that that is happening to you. Acknowledge that that's happening to your physical body and let it out, shake it out. So, you know, on a very, you know, 3D level, if none of this is your language, dance. You know, move your body, gyrate, get it, get it all out in a way that just feels like your brain is not really involved. Or, you know, have really passionate lovemaking, great, great, great intense sex, great, 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 you know, intense group activities or, you know, get, you know, do um, some physical exercise, you know, with proper form and, you know, a coach if you don't have any idea how to do any of those things. But, you know, learn how to swing around a kettlebell, deadlift until you can't deadlift no more. Like, these are really great activities that can, like, get out whatever it is that you don't really understand if none of this is your language and you just feel like, Sarah, what can I do when I don't know what to do? Shake, move, breathe, wiggle, like get movement in areas that are stuck, you know? Let it out. <sighs> Lines, breath, stuff like that. Stuff like that. Full moon energy. We're in Aries energy right now, which is the rambunctious ram, cardinal fire energy. We want to go first. We want to go fast. I want to like never ask questions, never ask permission, just fucking do it. Like that's Aries energy. But this full moon, where is it? That's where the moon is right now. So let me move it to where it's going. It's going to be over. Yeah. Balance relationships the other half Aries is the ram I am the Libra is the scales how can I find balance how can I find you know um, the partner how can I find you know love and not peace harmony everything exactly as it should be exactly as it should be so let's purge that. Let's purge that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of, what did I write down? Who, let go, let go, let go, be you, not what you think others think. Be you, not who you think others think that you need to be. Be you, don't be the you that you think that you need to be in the group. Sarah, that really doesn't balance out. Like, you know, you talk about team, you talk about community, you talk about all these different things. What do you mean, don't be who I think everybody needs me to be? No matter what your belief system is in this ever-changing world, you're different than you were three years ago. You're different than you were at the beginning of the year. You recognize that you kind of change a lot quicker than you really thought. You know, a dear friend and mentor and mentee, you know, she really reminded me that although I look up to her and although she's a few years ahead of me, she, anytime there's an exchange, anytime there's a teaching, there's an education, there's a learning, no matter how far we hermit, we are always the fool. We are always the fool. Um, what was I saying? She reminded me the other day. It's always a pass along. Oh, completely lost my train of thought on that one. Completely lost my train of thought on that one. I just went down like this rabbit hole. of like, oh my goodness, she's a Libra and she's going to be getting a lot of blessings and yada, yada, yada. All right, it'll... Oh, that's what she said. We, you know, have past lives, have known each other for lifetimes over but in the physical we've only really connected within a magical space since i'd say like november december 2021 um so yeah like november december of last year and that's wild and she goes you know you've changed so much since then you know the way that you process information is so much more efficient and she's like Although, you know, when it needs to be high highs and low lows, I'll go down those low lows and high highs. But the way that I view things, I'm not afraid anymore. 
not afraid of them anymore. And so finding that was so poignant and um, just recognizing that like, wow, even since December, I've changed a lot. Even since December, I've changed a lot. So maybe what I'm going to do, and you know, these are just offerings as to what I do for myself and what I offer to my clients as well. So if you're keen for more information, please reach out directly for a personalized reading and, um, and how I can help you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But definitely like do some scripting because we're letting go. We're not manifesting in my opinion when it comes like the power of the new moon that we just had and the power of the next new moon in Aries is so fucking incredible. The next new moon is an eclipse. Like we're literally going into life-changing energies here, everybody. Buckle the fuck up, but not buckle up in your car. Buckle up in your hovercraft. Buckle up in your spaceship. We're about to actually physically meet the aliens. Like I have five new grays that are on my team that hang out with me at night now. They're so freaking sweet. It's three and then two, um, but they're watching this exponential growth that I'm about to go through, which is so fucking cool because they are part of my team in the future. Like I, my future self sent them, like it's so, multidimensionality is such a hiccup. Buckle up, even for me. Even for me sometimes I'm like, for a lot of us on the path, as you know, whatever word you use for, you know you have to help. It does feel, the only way that I've ever been able to describe it is what, you know, someone who's joining the priesthood feels like, you know, when they know when they're in their teens that, you know, they're going to dedicate their lives to God of their understanding. Right now, that's like everything. That's everything for so many of us. There's no going back. Why would you want to? None of us are basic and none of us are meant to stay in a land where some people are basic and other people are gods. We're all gods. We're all God having a human experience. And in the new world, it's literally just everyone welcoming everyone saying welcome god i am god as well i will treat you as a god i will worship you as you worship me like it, there's no like that's the world that we're working into so if there's anything in your life that's like i need to keep this because i'm afraid because they're gonna have more than me or i need to do this so they're in my back pocket and she's like no 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 no, 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 no. In the new world, we read vibration. We go off vibration. So if your inner adolescent is running the show, you'll sit in the corner. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's what will happen. By your own volition. I don't even know if that's the right word. I don't even know that word. Like, by your own doing, because you will know that you're not ready to hang out at the round table. Like, the first few times back in 2021 that I was really astral traveling and really connecting in a multidimensional space, like connecting in front of like interdimensionals that exist physically in a different time and space. The first few times that I did this, I was so embarrassed. My inner adolescent came out in one and literally like my thought was, really Sarah, this is, this is it? They're not even in your living room. Like they're somewhere else. Like, is this even real? And everybody heard it. It was like I burped and farted at the same time in front of aliens. And I was like, oh my God, everyone, I am so sorry. Like that, like, uh, and they were very gracious because they acknowledge so many different multidimensional, like, because to them, they're viewing me and my process. Like we are, like we are divine beings choosing to come and play with like sticks and stones it's so fucking cool okay i am on a tangent right now i'm sorry everyone i love you all so much but multidimensionality and like interesting like this world is so freaking cool it is so cool so we're going to the full moon and you know pam gregory speaks so eloquently of this where it's like a lot of this within my lifetime will become mostly archaic and mostly um, nostalgic because we'll be able to connect effortlessly within a telepathic space. We'll be able to heal ourselves. We'll be able to receive the information that we need the moment that we need it in a, in a place of bliss and joy. So, you know, pulling tarot cards will really become like, oh, wow, remember when we used to do this? 
Remember when how this is how we first connected. This was our first telephone to, to you know, our other selves. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I love that it's that it's the fool. I just love that it's the fool. Um, so now we're just gonna get into the full moon. Next week, we're just gonna be purging. We're just gonna be purging and releasing old belief systems, old whatever we thought we needed to be, whatever we thought, you know, we were taught that we needed to be. Be who you dreamed you could be when you were a child. Remember that you. Before anyone told you that you had to pay a bill or that you had to participate in a way you didn't want to. Did you want to be a fireman? Did you want to be a gymnast? Look to those goals. Did you want to be a painter? A carpenter? A potter? What did you want to be? What did you want to make? What did you want to do? Ask your dreams to remind you. And let go of anyone else's opinion. But your own soul recognizing that you're worthy of just being every facet of your diamond. You know, the Libra is very balanced and very poised. Whereas the Aries would say, fuck you and punch you in the teeth before they bought you a cup of coffee. So I think in this full moon, what I want you to learn how to say in Boston, go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Or fuck you, whichever one you'd like. But I'd like with, with love, with love, with love. Like it's just like a, it's like a, go away, go away. Like when I say go fuck yourself, I just mean like get out of my reality. Stay out of my reality. Can you just, can you just move yourself from my reality? It's okay to have that. Or, my dear Grammy, bless her, she's passed on now, and who's this demure, quiet, soft-spoken woman. And, you know, I'll never forget one of the last times I saw her, we were down visiting, and um, my stepmother at the time had just was telling a joke or just saying something and it was gossipy it was just and my grammy i love you just sipping her martini and smoking her cigarette and just quietly poor taste poor taste I know. <laughs> the air left the room. <laughs> so if I can offer, I think at this full moon, usually I don't say like whittle these new tools, but any version of go fuck yourself to poor taste that you can incorporate into your repertoire and try it on in the mirror so that if ever like I'm literally just like visualizing like a beautiful like fisherman, blue collar gentleman that just like wants to paint. And he's just like going outside and he you know has bought like a canvas and he's bought like a little set and he wants to go outside and paint his outside of his house. And I'm visualizing him just like going out to like Main Street and like setting up his easel and like maybe some of his buddies walk by and they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa you're painting? I want him to say whatever version of go fuck yourself to poor taste that can let them be on their way. Like I want this phrasing to be literally one phrase 
like literally an okay stop or a no stop, whatever this phrase is that is get the fuck out of my reality. Move along, move along. You're not welcome here. No, no, you can watch from that sideline because I don't want anyone affecting this. I want you big. I want you bold. And now is the time to, my last video is literally about like, this is a boundaryless world. You know, we are gonna be open and exposed to everyone. So recognize you don't wanna have to process with these people all the time that wanna come into your reality. You wanna be able to say, hey, no. That's, that's, but with love, goodbye. But no. So yeah, maybe no. But from go fuck yourself to poor taste, let's find a phrasing that is, that we can keep with us as we release any fox that we give about how people will react to that. Wait, wait, for some of you nice people, I'm literally telling you about how to set a boundary with someone who's being an asshole to you. So if someone's an asshole to you, it is okay to say no. You do not get to rattle my cage. You do not get to come into my reality. You can stand from the sideline and you can scream your obscenities over there like an asshat. That's where you belong, over there. That's okay. Let's leave them there. All right, this is a lot longer than I expected it to be, but I love you so much. Thanks for joining. And um, we're gonna deep dive into the individual readings, but please reach out directly. I offer mini readings. I offer mini tarot readings, mini moon cycle readings, or if you were ever interested, we can set up a recording right before and right after the new and full moon. I'm um, probably right before the new moon and right before the full moons. And we can do readings that are very specific for your chart and your planetary alignments and where your cusps are and everything. It is as intricate and specific and infinite as can be. So please remember that all of these readings are very general readings. They're whole house general readings for mostly rising signs, but you can definitely still get the vibe for your sun and moon. But I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I love you.